creating sections and elevations. Both sections and elevations are automatically derived and updated from the central architectural design model. Their vertical and horizontal range can be carefully set, and distant areas can be defined to achieve better representation of elements in the section and elevation views. Vectorial 3D hatching, transparency, and vectorial sun shadows can all be automatically generated to achieve state-of-the-art client presentation. Switch to the first preset view in the Sections Elevations folder of the Navigator view map. Select the Section tool in the toolbox. Activate the Section 1 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Enter S01 for ID and Longitudinal Section for Name in the info box. Make sure that the first, so-called infinite, horizontal range and the continuous geometry method are activated in the info box. Open the Section Default Settings dialog by clicking the Settings dialog button in the info box. Review the General Settings tab page. Here you can set the ID, the name, the type, and the range of the section marker. You can also reference the marker to other existing markers by creating a linked marker or create an unlinked marker to use textual information. The controls of the Story Levels panel can be used to define the display of the Story Level Lines and Story Handle Markers on the given section view. This training guide will discuss these settings in later steps. Make sure in the standard toolbar that guidelines are enabled. Place a section line by first clicking at the point of label 1.1, then at the point of label 1.2, to create a longitudinal section line. Click a third time at label 1.3 to define the direction in which the section will look. Zoom in to the section label to get a clearer view about its content. Right-click the section line to select it and bring up the context menu. Select Open Section to have a look at the new section view. Switch off the grid display from the view menu. Zoom in and scroll to see the details if necessary. Go back to the floor plan view and select the section line if it is not selected already. We want this section to be broken at two points so it crosses two staircases of the building. To achieve this, we need to edit the section line. Select the next preset view in the view map. Click at the hotspot of the section line near label 4. This is also the halving point of the line. Choose the Break Section Elevation Line option from the appearing pet palette. Click at the point of label 1.5 to break the section line and lower its right part. Click the halving hotspot of the new vertical section line segment near the point of label 1.6. Make sure that the Move Section Elevation Line Segment option is still selected in the pet palette. Click again at the point of label 1.7 to move the section line break a bit to the left. Select the next preset view in the view map. We will break this section line at another point also. Make sure that the S1 section line is still selected, or select it if necessary. Click at the halving hotspot of the section line near the label 1.8. Activate the Break Section Elevation Line option from the pet palette. And then click at the point of label 1.9 to break the section line again and lower its right part. Click the halving hotspot of the vertical segment near the point of label 1.10. Make sure that the Move Section Elevation Line Segment option is selected in the pet palette. Click again at the point of label 1.11 to move the section line break a bit to the left. With these two modifications, the longitudinal section goes through both staircases. This is exactly what we wanted to achieve. Open the modified S1 section to check the changes. Go back to the floor plan view and deselect the S1 section line. Activate the next preset view in the view map. 
Activate the Section 2 Favorite in the Favorites palette. Enter a cross-section for name, and make sure that ID is set to S2 in the info box. Also, make sure that the Infinite Horizontal Range and Continuous Geometry Method are both selected in the info box. Place a section line by first clicking at the point of label 1.1 then at the point of label 1.2 to create a cross-section line. Give a third click at label 1.3 to define the direction in which the section will look. Activate the next preset view in the view map and the corresponding section favorite in the favorites palette. Go to the info box and make sure that ID is set to S3, the name is set to cross-section, the horizontal range is set to limited, and geometry method is set to continuous. In the case of this section, we want to limit the depth of the section so that we do not have distant building elements causing confusion in the section view. Place a section line by first clicking at the point of label 1.1, then at the point of label 1.2 to create a cross section line. Give a third click at label 1.3 to define the direction and the depth of the section. This time the third click will define the depth limit of the section too. We will now create the elevations. Activate the next preset view in the view map. Select the elevation tool in the toolbox. Activate the elevation one favorite in the favorites palette. Check the info box and make sure that the E1 is entered for ID and East Elevation is entered for name. Click at the points of labels 1.1, 1.2 and 1.3 to define the directions and depths of the elevations. Continue creating the elevations by activating preset views 6.2.7 to 6.2.11. Always activate the favorites called for by the view names. Check the info box and make sure that E2 is entered for the ID. Enter North Elevation for elevation name. Make sure to use the appropriate ID and name for the elevations. Enter the appropriate elevation names as you see it in this movie or please find them in the PDF ebook of this guide. Click at the points of labels 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 and 1.3 to define the directions and depths of the elevations. Activate the 6.2.12 preset view in the view map. Shift-click to select the elevation near label 1.1. As you can see, there are two lines showing the depth of the elevation. Both have hot spots at the middle. The farther one is the horizontal depth of the elevation. The one closer to the elevation line is called the distant area depth line. Elements in the distant area can be displayed differently. For example, with a uniform lighter surface color to make it visually easier to distinguish and give additional depth to sections or elevations. Go to the Elevation Selection Settings dialog and expand the Model Display Panel. Scroll down to the Mark Distant Area settings. Here, you can set the same settings for distant area as for normal uncut surfaces. For example, the vectorial 3D hatching for distant surfaces can be switched on to achieve greater graphical distinction and to achieve a nicer presentation. Click Cancel to leave the dialog. Click the middle of the distant area line near label 1.2. Choose Move Section Elevation Line Segment from the appearing pet palette. Click near label 1.3 to move the elevation line segment further away from the elevation line, thereby including more parts of the building in the non-distant portion of the elevation. Press Escape to deselect the elevation or click elsewhere on the floor plan for the same result. 